Megan Dean, Growing for Conservancy. Today I'm going to teach you how to draw macroinvertebrates, specifically aquatic macroinvertebrates. What you see in front of you is a model of a dragonfly's life cycle, starting with the eggs and then hatching to become a nymph where they live one to two years in water, usually in ponds or in rivers, then emerging out of the nymph state into the adult dragonfly that we all know and love. In order to draw a macroinvertebrate, it's important to know a little bit about its anatomy. This macroinvertebrate drawing clearly indicates the anatomy of a macroinvertebrate. This is a small minnow mayfly, and this is the form the insect takes when it is under the water in its juvenile state and you'll see the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. Those are the three main parts of the macroinvertebrate. And this macroinvertebrate has six legs. It has gills along the abdomen where it breathes, and it has three tails. Now, I've shown a lot of detail um, in the wing pads and in the eyes and the antenna even showing the segments that are often found on these parts of the macro's anatomy. I've got even more detail and created more of a 3D image by using a form called stipple, which we'll get into in a little bit. But the first thing I want to point out is really looking at the shapes that define and create the body of this macroinvertebrate. So I'm seeing a lot of shapes that are somewhat triangular. The wing pads are somewhat triangular. The head is kind of an oval. So when you're looking at how to draw your mayfly or your caddisfly or your dragonfly, really look for the shapes within the body and start out with the general sketch that way. The example I'm going to draw for you today is going to be a pale morning dun mayfly, and I'm going to draw this mayfly in its adult form. So it'll be a flying insect, and it'll have hatched out of our river uh, from its nymph larva. And the first thing that I like to do is look at my drawing space, and I just kind of make little marks where the top of the wings will rest, and where I want the tail to end, giving me, or the abdomen, sorry, giving me enough room to draw the tail filaments. And then I'm going to kind of bring it along this way, just lightly sketching out to try to get my proportions and my shapes. And my head will start right about here. And those three little marks will give me my anatomy. So I'm going to start out by sketching the wing. And I always start very lightly. So I have plenty of room to erase because I often have to do that to get the shape that I want. So this first part of the wing as I bring it down, it's just a gentle curve. I'm kind of creating an oval shape. And I bring that in. I'm not gonna get into the details just yet. And then I'm coming down and I'm going to create another long kind of oval shape to draw the abdomen of the mayfly. And this mayfly's body has definitely has a little bit of girth. It's not super skinny. I can even bring in my second wing here. And it has a slight rounded kind of hump on the top of its back. And then coming down into the head. And this is going to be a female pale morning dun. The male pale morning duns have very large round eyes and the females are a little bit smaller. 
And these insects only live for a few days to a few weeks, depending on the actual insect, the individual. And they get to fly around for the last part of their life, enjoy a life with wings, lay their eggs, complete their life cycle, and then they usually flutter down and become part of our food chain for our trout and a lot of other animals that depend on them for food. So completing the first leg. So I'm looking at this and I'm noticing that I need to make my head a little bigger. So my head is a little smaller than what I want it to be proportionally. I'm drawing this as scientifically accurate as I can. So I like the proportions to be as spot on as I can make them. And then I'll go back and erase what was too small. Now I've made it too big. <laughs> An artist is never happy with their work. Okay, so then I'm going to start adding in my other legs. I have a really prominent leg here. And these, these insects all have jointed legs. So working on that hinge system that nature's designed that works so well for our bodies. And when you see these in nature, they're so tiny that a lot of times these details are difficult to see without using some kind of magnification. So a nice bug lens or eye lens can help you see some of the details. Creating the tail filaments, and again, let me look kind of fast in my video so that you don't get bored and stop watching me because I've speeded up the film, but I definitely take my time on some of these details. Okay, so I'm gonna have a second wing poking out here. There we are. And then there's an added little wing that is a lot smaller and attaches to the abdomen here. Now the thorax is very segmented and kind of almost compartmentalized. Armored, I guess you could use the word armored for it. I would imagine to create the flexibility it needs to fly. And then we have the last leg coming here. And creating these hinges. And the beautiful thing about creating art pieces on the some of the tiniest creatures in our on our planet 
is that often we just kind of see them flying around or annoyed when they're on our windshield. But no matter how big or how small, every organism has its own, its own beauty and complexity. So I'm adding in the segments of the abdomen. And these give the pale morning dun some flexibility when it's flying, trying to escape a trout or a hungry American dipper. And come in with her eye here. And if I were drawing a male, I would have huge round spherical eyes. Like their eyes are pretty much, they take up the whole space of their head. is just a little bit bigger. So that is as much detail as I'm going to do with my pencil. And then I'm going to come in and at this point, you can switch to, I, I often like to do my scientific illustrations with a pen, an artist pen, an ink pen. Uh, you can also use this time to come in with some watercolor. Uh, watercolor pencils are a great medium because they allow you to get a little bit of detail. You're gonna to go to watercolor, add more detail in with your pencil first. Oil pastels are another really nice medium to use with these guys. I'm gonna make my wing a little longer. She needs nice big wings to fly around. So there is a basic anatomy and now I'm going to come in with my pen. Make sure I have the right one. So I'm using my larger size, my 08. I'm just gonna trace this. You'll notice that I use short lines and I connect them just so that I don't get the wrong shapes. Sometimes that fine motor skills are kind of difficult to master if you're not doing this every day and then your lines start to get a little wavy because actually your hands are getting tired.